welcome back and uh, what I'm doing today is a very quick video I've got my ESP32 I've got yet another motor that you may have seen before it's uh, I've used it another thing it's a DC motor and uh, it's uh, connected as a servo uh, position control with a uh, encoder here at the back and uh, there's no set point I've taken that off well it's actually around but I've not uh, connected it in the reason is because the set point is going to come from uh, uh, my uh, phone here uh, over the uh, the web uh, so what we do here is I'm following the work of uh, Rui Santos uh, who's uh, got this project a rather nice project on the web where you're controlling the brightness of a, an LED and he's doing it with um, by making the ESP32 into a web server, an asynchronous web server incidentally and uh, you control the slider to control the brightness of the LED that's quite a nice one to try if you see that uh, but I've used most of his code um, for the server part and then I've used my own code for the um, the control system for the feedback part and I've tried to, I wondered if both would work together or whether the latency would be too much but uh, when I run it you'll see over here I've got a it's running nicely at um, that frequency there which is the like a flag to measure the sampling rate, 4.9 kilohertz so you multiply by 2 as I showed you in the other videos that's about it's pretty close to 10 kilohertz and uh, it doesn't change much, it well, doesn't change at all really when I start sending uh, data so uh, this uh, guy here is uh, set up to, um, to to log on to our uh, local internet and because it's um, uh, firewalled out we've got a special internet that covers a couple of floors which is a sort of research internet which is rather nice and, and um, it's quite fast as well we've got our motor which is a 12 volt DC motor uh, power supply, a scope there and my phone and uh, if I when I compile it um, this this guy connects and I'll just show you it connecting um, first of all I'll just clear that one so that you don't see it so just uh, zoom out a bit and uh, find the there's the serial as the serial uh, information coming out there and it should tell us when we're connecting or if we connect it's still uh, uploading at the moment let's upload it so there it is so it says it's connecting to the Wi-Fi and it's given me the um, IP address so all I need to do now is connect my phone to the same Wi-Fi of course and and type in that IP address and uh, I should get access to the web page which has been uh, created on that tiny um, device uh, this is most of his code is inter interspaced with my code but you can see it's um, it's got HTML in it um, it's quite surprising for such a small machine but of course it is a 32-bit micro we're looking at here it's quite a powerful machine and that's the bit that does the graphics the slider function it does the slider and I've made the slider I just altered his code a tiny a bit I just made it from minus instead of 0 to 255 I made it from minus 255 to plus 255 so I get a sort of swing around zero because it's a set point I've seen other people doing this with the um, with their own uh, with these small servers that you buy and you can do that because it's PWM output uh, but here I'm, I'm not sending out PWM um, uh, from uh, from my phone uh, anyway I'm just sending out the, well, like the signal for PWM I'm just sending out the set point and the set points is the only thing I've got um, up to, uh, which comes to the uh, servo at the receiving end so if I can just get into my phone now which is I've got to put my thumbprint on it here we go so hopefully that should work I'll go down to my phone and you see the um, I'll just stand up here so that's working beautifully now I don't know if we can see both of them at the same time no. So as I turn this fully to the right, now to the left, oops, middle, I hope you're getting that. It's just I can't do, it's difficult to do with one hand, 
So that's happening over the internet. So it's not actually impairing the loop, which is good. I thought to begin with I might need two micros. One to is just to handle the servo and a separate one to do the um, the web page, but it's handling the web page and the servo simultaneously. So uh, just those of you that don't know what a an asynchronous uh, uh, in, in, an asynchronous web server is. Um, I think I've got the information here. So the advantages of an asynchronous web server are that, um, according to um, Ruby Santos, you can handle more than one connection at the same time. When you send a response, you're immediately ready to handle other connections while the server is taking care of sending the response in the background and simple template processing engine to handle the templates. Yeah, so you have to download a couple of libraries which uh, he's, he's either written or somebody else has written. Uh, this one here, uh, Asynchronous Web Server Library and one other one um, which I forget, oh, Async TCP as well, we need that. Uh, and the code is remarkably um, uh, straightforward. I wouldn't say it's simple, it's one of these things that if you've done it before you probably find it okay but it does need a little bit of thought. Um, once you're connected, it's just basic HTML. So the nice thing is the the setup sort of gets the 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 uh, web page running, and the in the main loop uh, where where it's uh, down here. So that's sorry, that's the setup, and that's connecting the that's connecting to the internet, and that gives you the local IP address, for example. That tells you you're connecting to the internet. That's lots of web pages. I've got that information, um, and I set up also in the setup the PID parameters, the gains for the PID, and then the main loop is more or less as before. So the only difference is I have to take the set point which arrives from the the server. Now that happens here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Error equals set point. I've called it set void underscore web minus counter. That's a integer set point web. And it came, it gets passed from the server. Um, and where is it? Um, slide, slider value, there it is. So it actually gets passed as, um, as a string. Uh, here, slider value, but so it's um, this is a class really, I think. So it's got an extension to int. You can connect, or you can you can convert it to to integer anyway, uh, with uh, putting that extension to int, and that converts it to a number, and then it's stored as in, in that the integer set point underscore web, and then when we go back to the error, we use that instead of the other encoder. So. That's basically how you do it. It's um, condensed. Um, can be figured out from Rui Santos's page. Uh, he does say he does just the um, uh, basic switching and uh, switching of LEDs, but the basic principle is there. Here we're putting a loop around this at the same time, but it's uh, highly stable. There's no uh, jitter or anything that I can see of that happens. Uh, of course, it's not highly responsive like uh, when you're local and you've got a one of these um, encoders over here uh, doing the job this one rather um, but if that's not connected I haven't taken that off so that it's working purely from the web okay thank you very much um, to the next video bye bye